my name is Sebastian and in this video I want to talk about helpful command line scripts and automation I came up on my system and that I use all the time that might be helpful or just an inspiration for you. If you watch this channel, you probably know that I use the command line for a lot of things. And one of my goals is to just stay on this environment more because while well, if I optimize just for all of the automation and small things that I use all the time, this is just much more efficient. And it might be something very small. That's the first example, like starting up a timer. Like for example, say, well, I would like to have a timer in whatever 60 minutes that just reminds me of something because I love to shut uh, off all notifications and put my phone on flight mode while working. So I'm really not distracted. And this is one of the few or uh, the only exception that can send me some notifications that then, well, I know when I, you know, want to uh, stop the Pomodoro uh, current working session or when I want to remind myself of an upcoming meeting so I don't need to keep this in my head. That's very helpful. And instead of pulling out the phone and setting up some alarm, I can just you know do this on the command line, which you can check out all of the scripts um, on my dot files on GitHub. So I will uh, share this uh, later where you can get them just as an um, well inspiration. Another idea of that is, well, for all of the tasks that you use all the time, for example, you know, having your uh, browser with your inboxes, all the um, tabs that you open up every day, this can be automated as well. So this can be something as simple as using a browser with a bunch of URLs that you start off and then, you know, you can do this. It sounds somewhat obvious or even, I don't know, like too simple, but it can be really helpful. And the same is true when you say you want to give some presentation and you always want to open up the same tabs or open up the same windows. Well, just automate this in a script and, you know, do this while you can um, relax and uh, sip your coffee and, you know, lean back. So this is also quite helpful. This is what I do all the time. Uh, similarly, I have scripts for starting up, um, you know, um, IntelliJ or IDEs, other editors. The reason why this is a script is actually that it's um, uh, that it knows about some directories that I can put in. So, for example, I can uh, put in some directory here that then it already opens up this. So it doesn't open up the typical project selector, but already uh, opens up this here where you can check this out. I, I'm, I did some shell scripting uh, for this. It's just really helpful for me. So another example is, well, when I'm working on something and I'm focused on some tasks, I don't want to be distracted by some thoughts. So maybe you know this that you say, oh, I got just got some inspiration or reminder that I need to do something later. And I don't want to open up my task list and add this there because then I will be distracted by all of the things that are inside. But instead, I have something like a drop a box here, like where I can just type something, press enter, and then it's gone. For me, that's a to do um, add um, functionality, which could just be a shell script that adds to some to do list um, txt file on your computer. For me, um, I must remember this for me what it does i use um, my day captain tool functionality and this uses an http uh, request uh, to this tool that i use and then it will be added to my well um, to do inbox and then i don't um, well have to remember it i will go through it at the end of the day so that's also uh, quite helpful this is just a script um, that i wrote uh, for that purpose and can be you know added to some uh, certain to do lists then. So I, again, the idea is just that I can invoke it from the command line. I don't have to think about it. I press enter and it will be saved for later and I conti can continue. So that's quite helpful. So there are a few more um, examples. One is you probably know about uh, this EXIF tool. Um, that can be used to modify the EXIF data for some images, especially if you want to post something on social media and want to remove all of the locations and things like that. That's really recommended. So I have an alias to remove, well, almost all of them. You could also say min dash all minus all. Um, the reason why I'm not using all is because sometimes you have some orientation that needs to be uh, safe, the info, otherwise it will be just wrong. So I remove most of them that would be, you know, GPS and things like that and date and uh, camera model. Um, so it's almost um, empty and you can invoke this on some uh, image PNG or multiple ones and then it will, they will just will be removed here, which is super helpful from the command line really fast if you want to post something. 
So that's uh, another thing too. Um, a little bit related to that and related uh, to the work I do for uh, for some um, posting stuff I have. Well, a script that actually takes a screencast of a current window and stores it as a GIF, which is super helpful if I want to create um, GIFs like this that I put on my blog uh, quite often where I say this was the command line and I'm basically just recording what I'm doing here and not to be well too distracted with all of these um, tools that it can use. For me, I found this out for the Linux world. That's kind of cool. Um, this is just a script. Again, you can check this out there as well, um, where I say, okay, uh, get the current window. Again, this is highly specific to my setup, but just for you to get an idea. And then it uses uh, this functionality um, to take a screencast and then to uh, convert this, uh, a screencast to a GIF that then um, can be quite helpful here to just see that this you know can be stored as a GIF and then it's just kind of cool that this works, especially that it works. I can trigger this with a shortcut um, without too much effort. So it just creates the GIF and then it's already there. For me, it's super helpful because I do this quite often when I um, write some blog posts or have some demos and examples. So that's another thing that I, it's, it's actually kind of a script. Um, I trigger it with a um, keystroke, but still I could do it on a command line and then it will create a GIF for me, which is uh, kind of cool. Another thing for presentations is um, the command line here. The font is a little bit bigger than usual. I use some sort of uh, presentation mode that, well, what it does, that's my setup here. It changes the, it's an X resources file that I have for uh, my setup here. This is again, just Linux specific, but you know, for you just to have an idea, I want to change uh, my setup, my, well, the, the visuals here and font size and everything just by automation. And then I say, okay, um, have this for video. If I um, open up a new tab, it's also the big uh, font or remove this, say presentation mode off. And then for the next one, it will be kind of small, my typical small font uh, that I use all the time. Of course, for videos, this makes more sense. So again, it's just some sort of automation um, if you change things a lot. In your IDE, of course, that's also possible. So just thinking of automation and shortcuts to do things that you do quite often. So that's um, another thing. Uh, what I do a lot as well as part of my um, self-employed business. So if I write some well documents or offers or invoices for clients, um, what is also quite helpful is just to have some uh, scripts that builds up some invoices from some specific, well, I use ASCII doc actually for plain text formats because for me that's um, just the fastest. So I could say, well, I have a certain template for that and I use ASCII doctor uh, to do this. So I have some ASCII doc templates here and I say, well, the way how I print this to PDF is actually using this um, wheezy print uh, functionality that takes an HTML using some style sheet and then prints it, which works pretty well. And I'm using this and then it's really reliable and predictable how it will look like. I can write my invoices using ASCII doc and then uh, process this as follows. So another functionality where this is just a little bit um, faster for me, I can write in plain text in my favorite editor and I invoke this functionality and then I have a nice um, PDF that I style once with all of the footers and headers available and then it works. So that's also kind of cool that this works. Okay, another um, thing that you probably know from a previous video where I was talking about Git is something like having a Git, I call this Git update or Git graph functionality, which actually points to another um, script that I have on my path. So this is how this works uh, with Git. For example, for Git graph, which is kind of interesting that uses some uh, printed uh, Git log functionality that then prints the whole thing in some ASCII art, uh, well, graph, um, which is kind of helpful. So that's, well, in fact, also shell script and update uh, quite similarly. Update just does, does for very basic projects. I say, well, basically add everything, commit, pull, push, um, and go to the, um, uh, go to the uh, top level. So that you can actually add everything for this repository and it's just kind of helpful. So, you know, all these automation steps that you do all the time can be just uh, done in some easier fashion with your own uh, scripts. So another example here. With regards to projects, demo projects especially, and Git 
for the git uh, ignore files what i also have i have um, a script to create some um, example projects for example a quarkus project that i call hello what it does it just creates creates the file structure for a basic project with some empty uh, things that I do all the time. Now I might say, hey, wait a second, I'm a Java developer too, and I know there is something like a Maven archetype, or there is this Quar Quarkus starter or spring starter project that can generate this. Yes, correct, but for me, um, I'm always changing the structure of the POMXML and the generated files a little bit. I'm always, you know, deleting one or two things. So for me, it's just more efficient to write a script that does exactly this. And as you can probably imagine, the script is super simple. I can say um, even Quarkus, this should just, well, create some files, create here my POMXML to exactly what I want with the current uh, Quarkus version that I need with the Java version that I want and just some dependencies that I always need so then it's exactly this it's basically well automated like that now you might want to say well do the same with just with the Quarkus starter project yes but then you know it's not my formatting that I would like so I always remove a few things in my um, in my uh, file here so that's just a little bit uh, easier for me and uh, this works really well in the same way when you have this um, project then I use you know scripts that uh, just create things like git ignore that then have this here so it's just a little bit easier for me you know things you do all the time you can have a shell script for it even for creating such uh, things like that it's maybe a little bit different for me because I use example and demo projects a lot as part of my uh, job but also I'm pretty sure you will come up with some automation that you use all the time especially creating some file structures displaying things automating things for that you know you can just have some uh, scripts for it okay so that's that Maybe you have seen um, this one here, my uh, keyboard monitor, which is another, actually a tool um, rather than a script, which just shows uh, these things. So it's not really an automation that I use in, for daily work, but of course, if I create some videos like that, which is just uh, kind of helpful, but actually, strictly speaking, it's not a script, it's a tool uh, that I use here. What is a script, in fact, is um, this capitalize uh, titles uh, tool that I'm using at first this was actually just a shell script now I'm using a Java uh, application that is um, a binary now built with a Graal VM which what it does it capitalizes uh, English uh, titles so if I say um, hello world from Sebastian it will just capitalize this it's not just capitalizing every single word it depends um, so, for example, if you say off uh, won't be uh, capitalized and things like that. So, again, this is just some helpful um, tip that you can use. So, for example, I can also include this in my editor. And if I have that in my Vim, I can invoke it uh, from here. So, you know, once you get used to using the command line more and especially having your own scripts, you can include them in your editor. I do this for actually quite a few in Vim where I can just trigger them with a keystroke and then it takes um, takes this line, will send it to the script as an argument and the result will be pasted here, which can be super helpful. Uh, for example, if you do this, if you do some sort of sorting, um, that you can have so this is just a Vim example but again you can combine this with your own uh, scripts where then you say okay please sort this and you can come up with things like that and of course using your own scripts so that's pretty cool um, I use this actually quite a lot and this is just again some inspiration of what is possible here so um, we've seen this another thing that I use uh, with regards to a uh, time so we've seen this timer already um, what also can be helpful, something like uh, time until. Uh, if you have something like a, a washing machine or a heating where you say, okay, I need to uh, put in the current hours. I was actually creating this for, for that purpose. And, uh, you know, it should start at tomorrow. Um, uh, tomorrow, 8 p.m., then uh, 8 a.m., then this will be from now just... Um, a little bit more than 20 hours so then you can say okay put in 20 if it should finish at that time or something like this so it can also be a small calculator where you say okay otherwise I would need to you know uh, ask my phone or count or something like this 
if you do this quite often, if you say, okay, you start up your washing machine every second day and it has this feature, you want to do it like that, why not, right? In a similar way, like calculating time zones, this might be more helpful for, Lee, for you if you uh, work across uh, teams. If you say, okay, right now, what is the time zone? We are located um, in this one as of recording. Um, what is the time zone for my typical other um, time zones? So this is just, again, some script that I use here, where then say, okay, print this uh, please for some other um, time zones that you can, of course, um, extend here. So this works where I say, not just for now, but if I want to plan a meeting and say, okay, here, uh, the meeting should be for my um, 6 p.m. So what is this, for example, for Pacific time? And then say, okay, if I say now um, 6 p.m., then, you know, this will be 9 a.m. and things like that. So when choosing a meeting time, this is just, you know, as your um, typical time zone selector, it's just faster if you can do it on a command line. That's why I created it uh, like that. So just for you, again, some inspiration anything that you can automate you can do here on the command line uh, as well so these are just some examples um, that i use uh, pretty much all the time if you're interested in that um, i have this on my dot files again it's always just an example it's always just some idea and inspiration you will come up with your different uh, scripts and you know your own things that are optimized for your environment and you should you should change this you should optimize it that you can do with as efficiently as possible, um, but maybe it can help you just as some inspiration. Also on this topic, I have a whole video course, how to be more effective as developers. If you like this video, I'm pretty sure you will find this interesting as well. A link down below. And if you found this helpful and interesting to watch, I would really appreciate a like. Have a nice day and thanks a lot for watching. Bye.